Hey guys, welcome back. So we're continuing with more God Carnage versus Eddie Brock, the King in Black, with Symbiosis Necrosis Part 3. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so for Symbiosis Necrosis Part 3, we come back to Our Lady of Saints Church not long after God Carnage killed Dylan. And with how it's done, we kick off with a monologue that's being delivered from the Venom symbiote, which once again delivers something that I've been waiting for since we learned the truth of the history of Dylan's conception. Because it's here where the Venom symbiote says, This is my son, but it for me as much as the Life Foundation symbiotes or Sleeper were, or Carnage, my spawn, flesh of my symbiote flesh, my child, created with the host I bonded with the most and the best, Dylan. Dylan is my son, and my son is dead. When Carnage, the evil child, the bad seed, tore Dylan's heart from his chest, I reacted instantly. I couldn't stop Carnage from getting away, wherever he went, when he left Cletus behind, curled up on the floor. But I catch my child, cradle him in my strands, stabilize him, thread filaments of symbiote essence into his flesh, at the micro scale, seal breaches, fuse torn blood cells, pump blood. I am not the anti-venom. I cannot heal, but I can repair. I must repair. Body death must be prevented. Then the body must be taken somewhere safe, even though I know how futile it is. I've done this for Eddie in the past. And when Bedlam, the mad Eddie, stabbed Dylan in the chest, but then I caught Dylan's soul. This time, I was too slow. I only caught his flesh. Dylan is dead and his soul is gone. Somewhere I cannot follow. So yeah, much like how we saw in part two of Symbiosis Necrosis, when God Carnage was talking to Dylan like a younger brother, we're now given the heartfelt words of the Venom symbiote, who directly addresses being the biological parent of Dylan. And I gotta admit, it was just super satisfying to see this issue open up with that, because you guys already know I've been waiting on this for years. But right after this, we go back over to God Carnage in the Garden of Time, 10 minutes before the end just seconds after God Carnage told Eddie that he killed Dylan. So for a moment here with Carnage seeing all the remaining Eddies here at the garden, it causes him to wonder which one of these Eddies is the real Eddie. Which really is one of those things where depending on how you look at it, they all are. But when the human symbiote Eddie runs up on Carnage in his birthday suit and cracks him on the jaw, it comes off like an indication that this might be him. Because God Carnage acknowledges that that punch hurt. And as we know, there aren't too many things at this point that can hurt God Carnage. So he's just like, okay, yeah, maybe you are the real deal. So next, he latches onto Eddie to take a closer look inside. But also, while he's in there, Carnage shows Eddie what he saw in Meridius' mind, which is a glimpse of the Venom symbiote taking over the world after being left with Dylan as like its final form of evolution, which also, if you guys remember, this is what Tiro saw when he was training with Kane the Conqueror and becoming Meridius. But right now with Carnage showing this to Eddie, he's asking Eddie, what does he think this means? Is this what Meridius thought? Is it Venom covering the world? Though with Dylan being dead, Carnage believes that he's solved that problem. And right here, after going into Eddie's mind, quite literally, Carnage breaks him down into a pile of flesh, only to then burst out of him from the inside. And right here, Wild is just like, well, so long, Flesh Eddie. You had a good run. I say we all make like him and split. And Tiro's just like, come on, man, too soon. And Finnegan just tells them like there's no point in them trying to run anywhere because it doesn't matter where they'll go because Carnage will find them. And with Finnegan being the version of Eddie who's still new to this and afraid of everything that's happening, who in his future he's supposed to run into Chasm and Madeline Pryor who both manipulate his mind and act as a catalyst to turn him into Bedlam. But right here because he's decided not to run and go against the nature of who he is as Finnegan in this moment, he ends up transforming into what is almost like a version of Bedlam, though without Madeline Pryor in the events of Dark Web. And it's pretty crazy to see, because prior to this, I thought human symbiote Eddie was gonna be the cause for one of these guys having an abnormal transformation. But even back then, I had the slightest clue that Carnage was gonna get to the garden this soon. So of course, with Carnage seeing Finnegan get all swole, he's just like, oh, you going old school. So next, Wild tells Carnage, if he thinks Finnegan's old school, wait till he gets a load of both Bedlams who right now they're both in the same place we saw them last, with their heads merged with countless eddies from each side going head to head. So next, Finnegan steps into their minds and he tells them, stop playing with yourself. <laughs> Get it together. I got a real fight for you. 
with Carnage. Which one of you wants it? Which from here works in a way to get both of the Bedlams on board and head straight for Carnage. So they run down on him swinging. Which right there just has Carnage like, that man is the worst nuisance on the beach. And it doesn't stop there, cause next, Finnegan comes through dropping the people's elbow. But also right here, Finnegan goes on to tell Carnage something that I might be looking at as if it's deeper than it really is. Cause Finnegan tells him, see, that's your weakness, Carnage. When you bonded with Cletus Cassidy, you learned some bad lessons. You learned from a scuzzy little serial killer who taught you how to hide in the shadows like a scary sadist. Venom learned from Spider-Man. And when he met me, we learned from Spidey together. And you know what the number one lesson was? I'll tell you, it was how to take a punch which right there is a very common thing about Spider-Man. Even 6160 Spider-Man said it recently. But the thing about this that has me thinking and possibly overthinking, it's the idea of everything we've seen Eddie go through recently, leading up to him finding out about Dylan and even after when protecting Dylan became his main goal. Because Eddie's taken a lot over the past four years or so. And it has me thinking much how like the Venom symbiote took the concept of web slinging from its time with Peter, that it's possible both Eddie and the symbiote took along with them some of Peter's resilience as well. Cause if that's the case, it would be a lot like your Eddie Brock Spider-Man from Extreme Venomverse, where at the time that Eddie took on a heavy sense of responsibility when he bonded with the symbiote. So it immediately made him even more like Spider-Man. So for me, seeing Finnegan say this, it just has me thinking like, man, that just might be a part of Peter that's been with Eddie this whole time. And we'll talk more about that concept in a little bit. But right now with both Finnegan and Bedlam 2X going in on God Carnage, this now has Wild and Tiro at the point where they're like, okay, do we jump in or do we make a break for it? Like they're in a state of fight or flight. But as they're going back and forth trying to figure this out, they hear Meridius just behind them calling for help as he's trying to piece himself back together. Meanwhile, in the middle of God Carnage getting jumped, he just starts laughing. So Finnegan's like, what's so funny? Is it that you lost this one? That two kings in black are enough to hold you down and pound you into a smear? That after that, we're gonna save Dylan from whatever you did to him? Is that the joke here? Only for God Carnage to casually tell him, no, no, no. It's what you said about Cletus, how he taught me to hide in the shadows. You know about that, don't you, Eddie? Hiding, stalking your prey, you and Daddy Venom were me and my host even before we were. We should be one big happy family. Except there's one thing you don't quite get, Eddie Brock. It's not the hiding that's the scary part. It's the big reveal as he just shoots the necro spear out of his chest and right through Finnegan. And it's crazy sad to see this happen because Finnegan's like, I don't understand. I thought, I thought I was the hero as he just fizzles out into nothingness. It's wild. And right after that, Carnage just calls back the Necro Spear, and he impales Bedlam. And in Bedlam's mind, we're shown that this killed one of them, the one who arrived here from Limbo, while the other Bedlam, who came here with Symbiote Eddie, in his mind, he sees the other corpse, and he's like, yeah, I win. And for Carnage, who's looking at the surviving Bedlam, like, okay, maybe I should take another stab at it, right here, he spots Tiro and Wild helping Meridius. <laughs> so Carnage more or less tells him, there ain't no need to run, just wait your turn. It ain't gonna hurt much, because really, it doesn't matter where they go. God Carnage is gonna find them. But oh man, it doesn't stop there. Cause next, human symbiote Eddie, he starts to make his comeback. Which now, this just has Carnage like, okay, just when I got used to killing Eddies, here's one that I can't kill, or can I? And it's almost like there's a moment here where they look at each other like they know what's about to happen. Cause next, Eddie's just like, you can try. And Carnage tells him, well, as long as I got your permission, and right here, Carnage just plants the Necro Spear into the garden itself. And he's just like, let's see if this does it. Pop goes the world. As Meridius is just watching and crying like, no, my garden. <laughs> Don't. But right here, this causes the entire garden of Meridius to erupt. To where from here, we go back to another monologue given by the Venom symbiote with it saying, Carnage, who is the death of the future, who wants to be the end of every life story. He has power now, power stolen from other sources, forged from other realms, power to shatter worlds as easily as a symbiote heart. Is he not my child? Is he not exactly like me? When I enter a life, do I not end it? Which from here now takes us back over to Dylan, who wakes up very surprised to be alive. But on top of that, we know prior to this, upon Dylan's death, he was sent to the eventuality 
And though we have yet to see how exactly that encounter played out, he mentions it was real, the eventuality, the five questions. So that in itself tells us, Dylan's encounter was very similar to Eddie's first encounter, when the eventuality showed Eddie everything. So now that Dylan's back, he calls for the Venom symbiote, and he's like, Venom, we gotta talk. But Venom does not respond, and Dylan freaks out. And once more, we go back to a monologue given by the Venom symbiote, where it says, I am not safe for life. I never was. The best thing I can do for any host is never to bond again. As we see a message left for Dylan by the Venom symbiote, that reads, I'm sorry, which now is just one of the craziest cliffhangers, cause I can't help but to think that much like how Eddie and the symbiote took on certain traits from Spider-Man, that they may have taken on traits from Dylan's mother too. So hopefully, Dylan can find Venom soon, before things get really dark. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons, thank you guys for all of your support, and for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.